recording and we are recording now. Hello. Hello. What is this? Let's put these pictures away. Today we are going to continue working on one of the uh, short story um, material bundles and uh, trying to shape it into a proper sto short story. Mm -hmm. Now and that give me give me a sort of synopsis what's been happening um well we had some thoughts on the scribe and the doctor like we sat and discussed it i think that's in a previous video mm -hmm. and uh basically what i've been trying to do is bring all the ideas together and then like work off that draft and then make that better you know so we had a lot of discussion about how scribes augmented and he's got some mem memory skills, let's say, and things like that. So it's, it's ideas like that that I'm trying to bring together. And also the little things, the little world building things, for example. So you had an idea the other day about how when Scribe and 16 meet, they talk about things like Scribe knows Bayema as Bayema, but, Code uh, but 16 knows it as something else, and it isn't until they meet up with the artificial intelligence that everything sort of becomes a bit clearer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Scribe might be able to work it out on his own. I haven't really got that, that far yet. Mm -hmm. But yes, basically, one uh, problem that they need to have, in my opinion, is that when they, when they first happen to be in the same room, they shouldn't be able to communicate quite so smoothly. Mm. Because I think the first draft was all like, Oh, fancy seeing you here! I'm <laughs> yeah. from Bayema, how about you? Oh, mm -hmm. let's break into this place! <laughs> yeah. But uh, instead of... Uh, instead of uh, so let's say, it's it's a different task now. So ins instead of picking the task of coming up with witty dialogue, uh, let's reframe the whole task about how they would communicate in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some, some witty moments will find your way in there uh, as a side effect anyway but the focus would be different and scribes in a good position like uh, with his data suit and his and his quote unquote augments and things like that mm -hmm. he uh, he's in a good pos position when it comes to languages mm -hmm. so yeah do you want me to just start reading um, I've highlighted in bits the with red the bits that I don't like okay uh, where does it even start okay so the yeah. first page is mostly your notes, and then here. Okay. Codex touched down on the unlit landing pad with a barely audible click. It's In the darkness. Yeah, so here I have a solution for you. Okay, go on. Just, just delete it. The whole sentence? No. Uh, the uh, part marked with pink. Codex okay. touched down on the unlit landing pad. Full stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clear that off there. In the darkness of the control center, Scribe scratched his graying beard, silently watching for signs of activity. The soft glint of his vision augments reflected in the monitor as it filled with details. He studied the information for a few seconds before relaxing back. Okay, stop there. <coughs> I have some uh, world building thoughts here. Uh on the sentence level I would think that in the darkness of the control center somebody scratches his beard might not be the best approach but anyway I'm thinking if a scribe if the scribe uh, faction or, or the scribes guild or order if the scribes rely heavily on various gadgetry and, uh, and doodads that is uh, linked to their body then unattended body hair might not be a good thing to have. So either lose the beard or <laughs> make it uh, a plot point that uh, that some growing stubble is starting to like it's starting to itch and uh, fortunately it's not it's not it's this uh, it's this infuriating stage of stubble where it is not yet interfering with his uh, uh, with his facial interface doodads so that he doesn't have to attend to it right away 
but uh, it is already noticeable. He felt the beginnings of a stubble. Okay, let's go with this. <laughs> Also, why is he feeling it now? Like, there there are certain uh, certain points that are kind of nice moments to have. Like, oh, by the way, my butt is itching. But uh, there might be a better place to insert it. So, okay. right now, the important part is that his ship has landed. And... Uh, and he is starting to sort of make sense of what the surroundings are and, and if this is indeed the place and etc. Mm -hmm. Also, I think uh, start log encrypt upon completion is very redundant because this should be something that is happening in the background all the way. So it would be rather when he deliberately stops recording that uh, that might be a plot point but if his whole if his whole job and his whole whole purpose and being revolves around uh, gathering data then certain processes should happen uh, without explicitly saying so I think my thinking with this uh, <clears throat> is along the similar path. I think that it, there's a element of him always being recorded, or things that he's doing always being recorded. But when he says something like "start log," that highlights a small chunk of what he what's being recorded. Yeah, I, I mean, I I get the thought process that you're saying, but the current uh, line does not achieve that goal. So okay. so instead. Something, something, something about checking his uh, passive recording process. Okay. Something, something is the technical term. <laughs> so it's like we should uh, we should totally acknowledge that he is checking something or he is uh, making more like he is clearing his memory dumps or he's he is uh, uh, he is creating a memory dump he is dumping the uh, recorded data into the ship's data banks to clear up his suit that's much much better i think So, I, I know that I'm running ahead of you here a little bit, but basically what he should be performing are, are a series of routine checks. Uh, he he info, dumps, uh, <laughs> info dumps his suit. That, mm -hmm. that sounds very scientific. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, uh, uh, he clears the data banks of his suit. Uh, he checks his uh, recording uh, equipment, he checks his, uh, uh, I don't know, he runs, he runs a bunch of status, status checks on his suit uh, and he is also uh, making maybe a status check about his body or like health check uh, so that uh, so that he knows that he would be able to point one fight if necessary and uh, and uh, memorize shit. So it's like electrolytes at the, 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 the levels. <laughs> eat the candy bar. <laughs> so basically. So you want to make a quick note of that? Yeah. Body check. <laughs> yeah. 
Isn't that what American footballers do to one another? Maybe. I think so, possibly. Because basically, what he's he's about to go out uh, into the field. Mm -hmm. He has to rely on the stuff that he has on his body and and on his suit. So he can't rely on uh, stuff that he has on his ship. So he has to perform equipment check, uh, health check, etc. It's like uh, before you start, uh, before you boot up a game and start recording. You you make sure that you have all the uh, unnecessary background programs closed and uh, mm -hmm. and that uh, the uh, recycle bin is empty and uh, that the computer and you might even do a tactical restart. <laughs> you know that that sort of thing. I would I personally would have compared it to leaving the lucky thirty eight. You know. That you make sure you've got all your stim packs. You make sure your well, rads yeah, are super the, low. Both, you know, all that both stuff. apply. So basically, yeah. same same thinking, uh, different uh, outputs. Mm -hmm. Mission starts, and you uh, you should also definitely make, make a quick note about, about that electrolytes, electrolytes thing because that was cool. cool. Low on electrolytes. Eat a candy bar. You know. That was a joke. <laughs> It's, it's it's still good, good for inspiration, inspiration though. Comedy bar. It's probably <laughs> there. There are better ways and and less wrong ways to uh, verbalize it. But yeah, so, so that's that's like the dirty text here, or not even dirty text. That's just inspirational notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got a cat at the window. Un oh momento, no! Por favor. Uh. Oh my God! The window opened far too far. I need to hang on. Give me a sec. <laughs> Okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> it's all good. Mm -hmm. Completely off topic, but I've got a new fire escape window, right? <laughs> so it, it swings open super easy, goes oh. all the way. And okay. if the wind catches... Like, even if you have it open a jar a little bit, the wind sometimes catches it and <laughs> next, you know, wide open. So, uh, yes, it's a bit of a pain in the arse. But safety first, yo! Okay, I think maybe read on a little bit. Okay. So, uh, we're going to be cutting this, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, an affirmative beep rang out overhead. At location DZ-62, non-essential power inactive. Scanners indicate three life forms. Attempts at communication have failed. He glanced down at the small wrist-mounted screen on his data suit. Information acquired from DZ44 states approximately 500 people should live here. Discrepancy requires further investigation. No other vessels present. Upon assessment, I have concluded I am at little risk and will continue my, mis my mission as specified. His attention drifted back to the main screen. End log. So, uh, here's what I think about the logging process. So, on one hand, uh, there should be like once you're out in the field, your suit should be capturing everything. So there's there's constant data capture, like environmental life forms, etc. Uh, however, what you could uh, what you could add to it are uh, like uh, verbal notes or or comments. So it's it's not as much uh, log because the log is ongoing all the time uh, and we could we could even say so that once uh, once the suit checks uh, have uh, have commenced then the suit then he switches the suit in onto the field mode or log log mode 
Mm -hmm. this down. So basically what he's doing is he is adding uh, field notes to the log so it's more like field note 1 or add field note and since uh, since his notes are, or like what he speaks, will be part of the overall capture anyway, uh, he doesn't have to uh, give them any special numbering or anything of that. Like, I would imagine that would be automatic. Just like, again, as, as if uh, the capturing software, just like the capturing software adding. Uh, Gen generating automatic uh, file names and such. So all that info should be generated automatically. So uh, he he just he could just speak up. I'm not sure I follow. He could just speak up. When you record a game, mm -hmm. the capturing software picks up the game and picks up what you're speaking into your mic. Speaking into your mic is not a separate process, it is just part of the overall capture. He is not doing anything different, like he is not initializing a new process when he is taking, when he is uh, noting something down because his suit is already capturing everything anyway. He's just saying stuff to himself that okay. is caught on the thing. You know, simple? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and that means uh, that uh, he shouldn't be... Since, since this is something that happens naturally, as part of the capture anyway this is not something where he uh where he should abundantly use the sort of uh uh captain's log start at such and such because those all all that info is already generated elsewhere okay which means he he doesn't he shouldn't add you know abundant prefixes when he says something. He could... Uh, mm, I don't know... Like, I, 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 I get why, why there seems to be a need to put these things in, because you want to like... You'd want to have this uh, moment of Okay, this is how this this is this is where he says something relevant, like you know, tapping the comms or or stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. We we'll find the way to to add that little hiccup without uh, would have without having to say log number one. Yeah. Okay. So it's more like uh, arrive at location. Da 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 da. Non essential power inactive. Etc. What do you think about some of the other stuff, like him glancing down at the wrist mounted screen on his data suit? Is that subtle enough, or is or does it need to be more subtle? Hmm. Why is a glancing down on the wrist display? What what does the wrist display give him? It shows him a little bit more information, so maybe his notes and stuff like that. Uh, again, if I w if I want to push the concept of a scribe suit further, I would say this is not the way to go. 
Like why okay. would you why would you have an extra do that that you have to read data from if your whole suit is basically interfaced to your body so maybe some direct neural links to somewhere he should have he should have that uh, that info on his eyeball already he shouldn't be looking down uh, anywhere however he could switch on and off certain uh, view modes and and data modes so for example it's like removing hard elements Ad adding and and removing uh, uh, info from his HUD. So this would be interaction with his with like a control on his wrist or something, right? Maybe. Right. I'm just going to say some interaction, some form yeah, of Yeah, yeah, some form of interaction allows him to switch different data layers on and off. And uh, is a sort of relevant note here is that even though the suit captures all sort of stuff uh, it is the scribe who interprets the stuff, so it's up to the operative to decide what's relevant and what's not. So, for example, he could have even more readings available and he can decide to discard certain type of info that seems irrelevant here. So, for example, the astronomical data about this location might uh, might be relevant uh, for the immediate case, and he will uh, he will remove that from the log or like uh, stop receiving that telemetry. And uh, when he comments, so basically, uh, the way I'm imagining this right now is that he he's exiting the ship. Uh, he is now ready for the field. He has performed all his checks. He has taken some uh, vitamins to be in his peak performance. And uh, his suit uh, has started uh, bringing in all the data. He is reviewing the uh, data feeds and deciding what's relevant in this case and what's not. Mm -hmm. uh, I had another thought here and it went away. Shit. <laughs> I had like a, a mini arc uh, formed in my head. So like basically he, he is deploying, he has checked all his vitals and the suit's vitals, he has started receiving information and he is now choosing between the info channels what to receive, what not to receive and calibrating his uh, reception or calibrating his info feeds for, for his current mission. Oh, and that's uh, that's what I wanted to also bring up. So when he, when he does speak up or when he adds comments uh, to, to the info it's when it's exactly when something is either amiss or something is off the charts or something is anomalous. So it's like he's uh, he's adding notes when when something seems to be noteworthy. Ta da! <laughs> and uh, and so it's like instead of stating uh, this uh, settlement has uh, or like such and such database says it has such and such and such many uh, people but the scan uh, scanner show free uh, he could flat out begin with uh, note on 
uh, note on this uh, note on serious discrepancy. So it's like he is taking notes when something is amiss. When I indeed, when something is noteworthy. And since he is noting discrepancy, this means I would also turn around uh, the presentation of the text. So, noting on a, on a serious discrepancy, uh, my scanners pick up exactly three life signs in the blah 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 area. The blah 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 re records indicated 500. Add objective something something something. So it is also like on one hand he is commenting on what he learns and he can also sort of <laughs> make little sticky notes for himself what he needs to check or what uh, what needs to be analyzed. So it'd be like after he says, <coughs> he's like he makes the note on the serious discrepancy. He says uh, there's supposed to be 500 people here. I only see three. Uh, then he's like, this requires further. Da -da -da -da. Uh, turn it around. Like I am. Uh, my scanners read three people here. The oh, okay. da -da 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 archives say there should be 500 so that's that's the discrepancy the <laughs> discrepancy the discrepancy is that he is reading so and so many life forms meanwhile the other thing has said there should be so and so many so what's up with that mhm mm because and if you because if you if you present it uh, the other way then it's like i don't know then it's like reading the phone book like we have 500 smiths here, however, we can only find three. So it's it is it is still the same problem, but it is not as uh, as potent. Okay. And then after that, after that, he updates his mission mm -hmm. to say it requires more investigation. Yeah. So this is like. If you find three people or three life signs on a place that was supposed to hold 500, that uh, would indicate uh, serious threats. Was there a disaster? Was there something else? So he would have to uh, uh, he would have to sort of adjust to to that possibility. So maybe maybe he will add uh, uh, add the scanning feeds or like intensify environmental scan. That's that's not how to say it, but that's mm -hmm. that's like that's like uh, uh, be uh, check extra environmental check basically, like any toxins uh, to or or toxin analysis, airborne toxin analysis uh, every. Uh, every 10 meters for example so he's uh, on one hand he is uh, uh, he is uh, sorting out his own mission like what's what I'm what what I'm gonna do next but he's also giving tasks to his uh, suit and ship for example if it's uh, if it's a um, uh, if it's a danger area with an imminent threat of cave-in, then the ship should be ready to uh, should be on a standby 
ready to, I don't know, immediately evacuate. Or if it's a... Uh, mm, if it's a cave full of uh, noxious gas, then uh, you should activate uh, breather protocols or whatever. So he he is picking up uh, information from around him, and he is adapting his tasks and the suit's tasks to fit that. And uh, this uh, process should uh, uh, should be the means of giving all the info about uh, his job and uh, and his suit set up so this would be this would be our way of showing how th how this shit works okay it's a better way of doing it than screen on wrist <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and then after all that does he continue the log by saying the other stuff that's not a serious discrepancy but is slight cause for alarm like the power is off uh, he hasn't been able to communicate with anyone that sort of thing mm -hmm. so yeah so anything that the uh, that is uh, not immediately obvious or visible through the feeds should be something that he has as his own notes uh, it's like uh, the fact that he has not been able to communicate with anyone is something that he should definitely say out yeah. loud. And also uh, he continues looking for uh, active power sources. So far none. Or, or maybe active power sources are at certain distance which will be that way <laughs> all right Okay, I think that's all I had okay. for that section. Would you'd get rid of the DZ four four stuff as well? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, keep it in for now. Like I would, I would definitely want to change it, but I don't yet know how. Uh, I personally have not yet worked out uh, his manner of speaking and uh, his manner of. Uh, presenting information mm. so it's like maybe we can slip in some sort of uh, highly specialized uh, uh, techno bubble there I think what I was going <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I think what I was going for is like this is this is their this is how the scribes designate mm -hmm. certain regions um, yeah so we can uh, we can maybe go over uh, that idea a li uh, with a little bit uh, bigger scope, mm -hmm. so that we have uh, we have an idea how they would call some other place as well. Yeah. All right, cool, good thinking. <laughs> and uh, tangent ahead, this also Whee. opens up a bigger question about all sorts of designations, etc. Is that uh, we can't actually assume that everybody's using the uh, Roman alphabet, yo. <laughs> I mean, I would assume that most uh, that uh, using Roman alphabet is a highly spe specific situation, mm -hmm. uh, only applicable to highly specific situations, and uh, and the uh, standardized uh, or the, the the second language tools have a whole lot more. Uh, yeah. On their disposal. So it's going to be in, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So in that sense, it could actually be that uh, they are giving designations uh, 
through some other filter so it's not like they have letter and and number combinations but in, instead it's more like storytelling kind of thing okay uh, like i don't know the third scale on the dragon's tail that that sort of uh, that sort of classification so it does the same job but it puts all the locations in some sort of string of narrative. Hmm. Okay, let me... that sound about right yeah or or like locations different locations di places and places and spaces form a narrative which allows you to remember so again this would be one of those uh, low tech uh, backup systems if you have to if you have to memorize a random string of letters and numbers it's much harder to do than memorizing a sentence as a passcode. Okay, I didn't need that, to note that down. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that that's that's the thinking here. Yeah. All right. Of course, this is this is a whole <laughs> this is a much bigger mm. uh, world building issue that pr that mm -hmm. sort of hints uh, hints that it might be a, a whole lot of fun, but it's also much bigger in scope. Yeah. And yet another much bigger <laughs> in scope uh, world building uh, uh, thing would be to maybe ask also what would be the uh, uh, time measuring system or more like keeping track of time uh, for the scribes so because the uh, local like because transit there isn't much uh, synchronization between uh, different local uh, temporal signatures. So it's like, yeah, you can you can say what time is it uh, in one place, but it's it's meaningless. So mm -hmm. maybe they maybe they have some sort of bigger counter that all the other systems are uh, are sort of linking into. It's like. Uh, so and so many seconds from from the I don't know from the first exodus blah 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 so some some sort of long term uh, time counting uh, thing might be going mm. on but that's that's just a thought don't don't worry about it right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> To continue reading? Yes. Before I get carried away again. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning forward, Scribe poked at the tab for communications. As he stared through the blank screen, a notification appeared. Other human signatures, too. Scribe sighed loudly. A confused frown appeared <laughs> on his lips. You can see why that's highlighted in red, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He pushed himself onto his feet using the armrests and took two steps to the rear of the command centre. A modified armour vest hung on the bulkhead. Scribe pulled it on and stepped through the hatch as the straps auto-tightened. Okay, uh, here's the thing. I would say, uh, I, I would change some of the order of operations here. Is that during the, o during the part that we added all these notes in, he should already be uh outside of the ship so it's like when he when he runs the suit check and his uh health check and the immediate area scans after that he should he should be out and uh and already uh scanning and taking notes so at this point he is nowhere to push himself out of he should already be outside the ship Okay, so I need to change some timeline stuff here. Yeah, and again, a modified armor vest, armor vest hanging anywhere, 
instead of that, describe what his uh, suit does, because his suit would have to have armor capabilities as well. Okay. So like a specialist suit is on one hand garment, garment on the other hand armor, on uh, uh, third a uh, utility belt, uh, a toolkit, a computer, mm -hmm. uh, and so much more. <laughs> so for example, uh, if we contrast this with uh, Jewel, who is wearing pretty much normal clothes with some armor capabilities, she does she uh, she doesn't have a specialist suit on her currently. No. <laughs> but uh, but this, on the other hand, would be what what you're kitted out with for like hardcore field work. So this should also. Uh, show a little contrast between the seriousness levels and and also show the uh, show that very different uh, tech levels are being used uh, depending on what you do or depending where you come from and, and so on I feel I should make a note of that, but you're recording, so I don't feel so bad. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't know where to where would I even put that note. That's yeah, that's uh, just sort of like that's that's the mental note for myself. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're gonna have to change our perspective a little bit. We're still in the ship for the next little bit, uh, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, why? Well, we're we're going through the cargo bay. Skip that. Why do you, why do you need to add all that? Uh, instead, let him run his checks in the ship, and then when when he's out, he is already scanning the surroundings. Like why 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 does he have to uh, travel through all that? How, what does that add to the story? I wanted to show the uh, that he's modified his cargo bay to contain loads of systems and computers pertinent to his job. But you can you can just summarize that with one sentence later on, like just like his suit. His also if he if he is again if he is representing a, a, a highly specialized guild of specialists who are very special. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, his ship would by default be a specialist class vessel. What would there be to modify? Okay. I think this is this is fluff and moot. Moot fluff. Uh. Uh, keep it as author notes, like yes, his, uh, his ship has uh, enormous data storing capabilities, and maybe also uh, artifact holding capabilities because sometimes he would have to uh, actually grab physical storage media and sometimes maybe he's doing some grave robbing on the side but uh, the whole point that uh, or like trying to claim that his uh, cargo hold was heavily modified to me it speaks of wrong uh, assumptions like why why are we assuming he's using why why is he using somebody else's ship then why doesn't he have his uh why doesn't he have a ship that is already uh made for his needs and furthermore why would you assume why would you assume every ship has a cargo hold so it's like a whole whole lot of assumptions that are getting in the way of uh, of what he needs to do.
so I would pick it all up from where he's already outside. <coughs> the bay was bathed under the light of a full. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. The bay was bathed under the light of a full moon. Scribe paid little attention to the metal framework and solid archways as he hurried along the walkway. His steps echoed around him, the only noise in otherwise silent surroundings. He eventually emerged into an open dome structure. Okay, wait here. Uh, I am immediately going to pick apart the uh, setting here. So, where did you say this base was again? It's uh, it's either a, a platform or on a uh, moon or something like that. Like it's a facility on in one of these locations. Okay, so let's let's assume that it's on a moon. Where does the moonlight come from then? And furthermore, again, uh, let's uh, let's create the. Uh, world setting where it is and then describe what we can see instead of bluntly saying it's a, it's in a moonlight because when you say something is in a moonlight then that again brings along the bundle of assumptions about what moonlight is and how it and and how it works and all those assumptions are based on how it works here if you are actually describing a place elsewhere with a different sky, with a different uh, setup, then you have to assume that none of that works. None of that works the way we are uh, we are used to. So uh, let's imagine up the scenery and then say what we can see. Uh, this is a similar thing as uh, what I described for Geresa, uh, for Escape from Kvesa, when the dude starts emerging, uh, sorry, uh, when the dude starts emerging from his prison cell, then describe gradually what he sees. Like, uh, there's an environment indoors, there's light ahead. He walks towards the light. The light is a different shade than he is su used to, and then bam, there's the wrong number of uh, of suns in the sky, and the sky is the wrong color. So similar thing here. Uh, let's figure out what this place looks like, or like what, where where is this setting, and then describe what he c what he should be seeing. Okay. And uh, for a quick note, so let's say uh, the base itself is on the moon. Uh, is what's the what's the planet like that they that it's orbiting? Is it a rocky planet or a gas planet? But I uh, well, that's a question we're gonna have to answer. Aha! <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> that's uh, that's why I'm. Why I'm bugging you so much? <laughs> that's that's why I'm uh, why I'm bringing all this up. Carry on. Mhm. Mm Around the edges sat various empty desks, while a large circular room stood in darkness at the centre. It appeared as though the workers had gone home for the night cycle. Signs above the many openings offered directions to other landing bays, shops, the pod station, deliveries and more. The scribes okay. stood... Yeah, wait. Okay. So again, uh, let's analyse this place a little bit more. So, describe, without disregarding the text description here, uh, describe me this place that he finds himself in. What is this place? What's what does he what does he actually see? Well, okay, like it's like a check-in in area. Okay. All the pl all the shuttles and stuff that have arrived on the landing pads, and okay. 
I imagine it's like a it's like a dome, but it's not like a complete dome. Like the sides of it are quite open, but mm. the openings are uh, they're sort of blocked by the desks, so you couldn't just walk straight out. You'd have to go between like some of the desks, like AKA check in or whatever, uh, like register your. But it's visit. it's it's more like uh, it's more like port area though, or like port or or docking area. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I would want to remove the emphasis from the desks. Okay. Because point one, uh, is this is this like an like a public access point? Is this a public port? Uh. Well, this is the thing, right? It, for all intents and purposes, it looks like okay. a public port. But if you look a little closer, it's obviously okay, not. Okay. So, so on one hand, we could s we we need to add the layer of uh, airport thinking. But on the other hand, it should look off a little bit. Mhm. Mm but again, uh, the the current text doesn't quite convey that. Uh, that idea that we are in a docking area with some uh, checkpoints. The way it reads now, it's more like he has landed in the middle of a library or an office. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not what we're after. Okay. Continue? Mm hmm The scribe stood examining his choices, a quiet tapping drew his attention. It was muted, distant at first, but sped up as it got closer. He fought a chill, tightened his grip on the spear, and aimed it towards the approaching noise. The familiar glow of his augments and data suit faded as a bead of cold sweat rolled off scribe's chin, and then there was silence. Okay, now this is the point where the uh, stubble could raise its ugly head. <laughs> oh, so it's like, uh, he went through regular defolification processes and yet his double persisted. It was not yet uh, it was not yet big enough to interfere with the with his face implants, but it was certainly itching. <laughs> Or like suddenly he was aware, blah blah blah. So basically, the point where there is discomfort, where he has to adjust, where something, uh, something adds up. Uh, and also, it occurs to me that you won't have to do away with the, uh, uh, with wrist or arm controls entirely, because it could be that uh, when he. When it's when it's a situation where you don't want to make much noise, you can uh, tap in some notes uh, manually. So he could be typing some notes in. And uh, we could say that he is typing and then add those thoughts uh, as inner thoughts. Or add what he's typing as inner thoughts or fragments. Unknown noise. Expect threats or expect danger. And this is where he could add that uh, uh, something doesn't add up about this port area. Port R. <laughs> nice word, Dave. <laughs> R. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, for example, uh, he could be. So, let's say he is uh, stationary. Uh, he is crouching somewhere inside the uh, uh, docking area, port area, lobby, whatever. And uh, he is running a visual scan. And this room is devoid of life signs. 
However, he is noticing that the checkpoints, all the checkpoints are unmanned and uh, the analysis of the checkpoint uh, contents shows that they all have the same uh, desk, like their desks are all littered with, uh, with exactly the same pattern, indicating that uh, that they are all basically just uh, props. Pal. All right, the notes are in. Show me. Mhm. Mm yes, very good. Okay. So and yes, exact. This this is exactly the stuff to put on his uh, thoughts and comments. Carry on. Uh, just a second. I was starting okay. to think. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe his notes should come in form of written notes to begin with. In other words, he is typing and we are showing inner thoughts. Okay. That might work better than, uh, Voicing it out loud as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this uh, and this way the distinction is clearer. Like you can you can say that he he tapped something on his wrist console and uh, and uh, then add the inner thoughts, and then it's uh, sort of clear that uh, this is some sort of layer of data. Like this is this is his notes. I've added it right at the top of the document. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, page two between just under the title. Uh huh. And uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. If uh, if the life signs are decreasing, like if in the beginning there was three and now there is one. There should be an alert every time the uh, life sign count changes. So it's like <gasps> life signs from went from three to two. Oh my god, something's happening. Mhm. Mm that that happens. <coughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna continue on. Okay. S Scribe held his stance, not entirely. Th oh, this is a great display of. Tell, tell, tell. Uh, no show. <laughs> Scribe held his stance, not entirely threatening, not entirely defensive, giving the impression he was combat trained. As he inhaled, a distant scream caught his breath in his throat. Out the corner of his eye, he saw the wrist screen flicker. Other human signatures won. Yeah, so this is not what I meant. No. Uh, so, but so yeah, here is that he is already hearing the scream. And and then he notices also in the wrong interface that uh, that the life signs are now one. But instead, the system should alert him every time the life signs change. So like before, when it's when it's uh, from two uh, from three to two, then there should be an, an immediate alert because again, this uh, this is information about uh, imminent danger. If people are dying around him. That means he might be in danger as well. I've added it to the first alert. Mhm. Mm and also, uh, if it no. Shouldn't... Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. So here. So if he's alone in this room, why will he try to show himself? He should, uh, quite the contrary, he should remain uh, even more hidden as long as he can. He could even activate some, I don't know, stealth protocol on his suit. Or like visual interference protocol that allows him to uh, 
be partially concealed or, or blend in better. But will it blend? <laughs> <coughs> oh, oh man, man. Every, every time, time I go to spell protocol, protocol I, I, I can't. I never, never nail it. Three O's. That's, that's all you got to remember. It's <laughs> got an A on the end. Protocol. And, and also, also, when this warning flickers up, it should be in his eye, eye right? It should be. Yeah, yeah. So all the all the alerts and uh, and and doodads should should uh, appear in his field of vision. Decision, no. <laughs> there you go. Okay, and then finally you've got Scribe remains still. His eyes darted along the far entrance between a set of desks to where the noises had come from. A slight breeze brushed over him, chilling the drops of sweat and causing something in the distance to rattle. Scribe adjusted his aim. And then that's where I... I've... Stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, vocabulary wise maybe maybe use the term checkpoints more de deliberately and only bring up desks when he, when he's uh, noting the contents of the desk uh, the contents of the checkpoints And then uh, 16 and Scribe encounter one another, and I haven't written any of that yet. Okay. So yeah, we've got to the end of the recent redo of Scribe and Doctor. First scene, I would say, or yeah. or, or maybe first two scenes. Depends how we how we distribute them, how we distinguish them. Yeah. But this is the deep end stuff now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I feel like uh, a lot of the ideas have been brought together. So mm -hmm. the, da the data suit is a thing that exists now where it didn't before. Uh, Scribe has augments where he didn't before. So I feel like bringing all that together and now giving it the super polish is, is, is coming together nicely. Well, I think we we are still far away from the super polish, but we are starting to get the idea about mm -hmm. how he's operating, and yeah, and and then how this environment is operating, and then how he is operating in this particular place and its environment. Uh, I think maybe not super polished, but everything's <laughs> coming together, right? <laughs> everything's starting to fit together we're, we're getting a better impression of what's going on mm -hmm. so that's neat I like that okay. um, I think I will wrap up this on this positive note <laughs> <laughs> I will wrap up this recording thank you very much for watching thank you